Hey everybody, one last uh, intro sociology lecture before we go. This is on age demographics. What do we mean? Uh, you know, demographics are all about populations. So often we're talking about racial demographics. How have the racial demographics of America changed between 2020, 2010, and 2020 when we do these censuses every year? We're finding um, there's more brown people. Uh, we can talk about gender demographics. What are the gender demographics of a, of a college? How uh, How is it changing? So, for example, we know since 2010 more women have been graduating from college than men. So we're always looking at populations. We're going to talk specifically about age demographics when we're talking about the population of people at different ages. And we're, we're going to use a kind of tool to do this, which is the age demographic pyramid or the age pyramid, which is really a triangle. And it looks like this. Uh, the, the, this, <laughs> this is meant to be a triangle, hand drawn. Uh, at the bottom are people who are age zero. So all the babies that are born at the bottom. Uh, this is a standard population pyramid. Babies, you know, you have infant mortality. So sadly, you lose some babies along the way. And then you lose some more people in childhood to accidents and childhood illnesses. And then we lose more people, you know, when we get into adulthood from suicide, which is the number one killer in this age bracket. Uh, and car crashes and and then we get into chronic diseases like cancer and and we start losing more and more people and at the top there's only a few people left you know you've got someone who is 120 years old right right at the top the person that's the oldest person in in the country which is kind of like a doomed thing you never want to be named the oldest person in the country at any given time because those people always die it's kind of like a curse but this is sort of the standard pyramid. A lot of people being born and you start losing people until you have sort of one very old person at the very top. That's the standard age bracket. Well, that standard, uh, it varies around the world. So you can have places um, like Norway where they have a really low birth rate, but they live a long time. The average uh, life expectancy is 83. So people make it to at least 83 and some people make it longer, but the birth rates are low. Or you can have a population pyramid that's wide at the bottom, a place like Kenya, where they have a lot of babies being born, a lot more than in Norway, but there's higher infant mortality, there's higher adolescent death, and the life expectancy in Kenya is 66. I mean, that's a big difference, right? So this age pyramid is still going to be triangle-shaped, but it's going to be squat. But generally, we follow this triangle pyramid shape of populations and nations. A lot of people born at the bottom, and then gradually as you age, you get fewer and fewer people. Not in the United States. We've had some interesting things uh, impact our age demographic pyramid. One of the big things was World War II. World War II, you know, we're coming out of the Depression, right? World War II starts in 1941 with the bombing of Pearl Harbor. For us, it had already been going in Europe in since 39, when Hitler invaded Poland, all that Hitler. Uh, but we're coming out of the Depression, and everybody's, you know, now all about the war. The war in the Pacific and the war in, the, in Europe. And that war rages. And when it's done in 1945, after a few important incidents, you know, a dropping of a few atomic bombs and Hitler blowing his brains out in a bunker in Germany, um, the war's over. The economy is roaring. And a lot of men who have been fighting overseas, either on the, on the European battlefields or in the Pacific, come home. They come home to women who have missed them for a while. They come home to a world that is safe for democracy and a world that has a very positive economic growth pattern, right? We're in the post-war economy, so people are really kind of feeling good about the world. So what do those men and those women do who haven't seen each other since 1941? They make up for lost time. And we get nine months after the end of World War II in 1945, the beginning of what we now call the baby boom. A lot of babies getting born. People, people <laughs> making up for lost time. They feel safe about the world. They've got money in the bank. They're, you know, they're working. And the GI Bill is helping to get you know, GIs into college and helping them to buy homes and people feel really good and they just get busy and they get busy and they don't stop. So all of a sudden, the population pyramid at the bottom is starting to swell. And we have a lot of babies being born. 
So it starts to look like this big giant blob at the bottom. Uh, and that, that goes all the way into the early 60s. You know, in 1963, the birth rate finally starts to drop. So we refer to the baby boom as this period of people who were born between 1946 and 1964. There is a, a huge shift in our society. Now, all of a sudden, in the late 40s and early 50s, we're very baby oriented. This is where baby food comes from. This is where baby formula comes from. Where, most importantly, this is where disposable diapers come from because there are so many goddamn babies there's just babies everywhere because all these people are having babies those babies start to get older and start to move up the pyramid so by the time we get into the to late 1950s um, those babies that are born in 1946 start to hit adolescence right if you're born in 1946 in 1958 you're 12 years old and you're starting to hit adolescence and so all of a sudden we have the birth of teen culture not that there hasn't always been people that have been, you know, 14 years old, but we get a disproportionate number of teenagers starting in the late 1950s. This, by the way, is when rock and roll emerges. Rock and roll becomes the voice of this new category of people that are neither children nor adults. They're kind of in this in-between category that we call youth. And so we start developing in the late 1950s a youth-oriented culture because a third of the population is now young is born between 1946 and 1964 that blob of young people starts moving up the age period uh, age pyramid and uh you know after 1963 the the birth rate just sort of drops dramatically because people are tired of having babies they need a break they gotta have a cigarette they are a little bit chafed they've just been having too many babies i mean that's a long period of time 46 to 64 Right, that's a that's a whole bunch of baby having, so it, the birth rate just sort of plummets in '64. That's the year that I'm born, by the way. That's the beginning of Generation X, which is a relatively small generation, uh, but that baby boom generation starts to age. And as we move into the '60s, if you think about 1964, when the Beatles arrive, you know, and all the teenagers screaming and going crazy. But then, if we think, you know, as we move into the mid '60s. Right. They're all start. They're starting to turn 18. They're all those baby boomers, all that huge chunk of people that were, you know, in in um, in disposable diapers in 1947 are now uh, in 1967 turning 20 and a bad time to have a war, bad time to have a war with a draft. You know, the, the war in Vietnam was raging when one of the reasons the 60s were the 60s. I mean, the main reason the 60s were the 60s was because there were just so many freaking young people. I mean, everywhere you look, there's an 18 year old and you're telling them you're going to draft them and send them to Southeast Asia to fight in a war that nobody cares about. Uh, the 60s become this era of rebellion because so many people uh, are young. Uh, the music is driven by all those young people. The fashion is driven by those young people. The drugs are driven by the young people. The politics are driven by the young people. And remember, 18, 19, and 20 year olds still don't have the right to vote until the early 70s. So the 60s are the 60s because the baby boomers are all basically, you know, 20, 21 and under. I mean, they used to say in the 1960s, don't trust anybody who's over 30. I still say that. Um, and then in the 70s, you know, they start going into their their later 20s. Uh, and this is the disco era. This is, you know, now I'm not going to settle down. I'm supposed to get married and have a kid when I'm 21. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to settle down, do a bunch of cocaine and hang out at the disco. And so the 70s are, are sort of framed by these baby boomers now starting to get a little bit older, uh, delaying the kind of responsibilities of adulthood and partying. You know, they're partying and they're, they're 20 something and they're starting to hit 30 and really uh, enjoying the notion that you don't have to be like your parents. So the 70s are really kind of framed by the baby boom generation. Then when we get into the early 80s, something interesting happens. One of the big things that happens in the 80s is the AIDS pandemic, uh, really scaring people away from all the free sex, uh, the free love that was very popular in the 60s and the 70s. And those baby boomers are now, you know, well hitting their 30s and they've got their own biological clock. So you start seeing that those baby boomers 
who were the hippies of the 60s becoming the yuppies of the 80s, the young urban professionals really settling down. You know, they have SUVs and they start having their own kids. And there's a whole second wave of people as the baby boomers settle down uh, in the 1980s and start having their own kids. And we, call, we started calling it the echo wave, the children of the baby boom generation. But in fact, um, that generation, as I'll mention in a second, what we now call the millennials, is even bigger than the baby boom generation. We'll talk about the millennials in a second. So in the 80s, uh, in their 30s, settling down, becoming more professional in the 90s. And that carries us to the present where they are now hitting their 70s. The baby boomers now, uh, the people that were born in 1946 um, are now turning 75 years old. Um, two examples of 1946 babies that might help you to frame sort of where the leading edge of the baby boomer uh, generation is, is Donald Trump, born in 1946, now with 75 years old. I don't like to think of him too much. Uh, another baby born in 1946 that I like to think about quite often is Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton is also 75 years old, which makes my mind explode. And where we were in the 1980s, when we were looking at the baby boomer moving through this thing. I mean, if you think about when a snake eats something really big and it's got a big bulge in the middle of it. You know, a snake eats like a fourth grader and they got this big giant lump in them. That's been the baby boom generation sort of moving through society. And yeah, it made the 60s really great. But, the, you know, we started freaking out about what happens when these baby boomers in the 2000s start hitting 65 and want to retire. You know, wh what's going to happen to Social Security? There's going to be so many people retiring that we are um, we're going to be out of money. That didn't happen. And the reason that that didn't happen, and, you know, now they're 70, they're 75, right? They're getting old. I mean, I, Paul McCartney turns 80 years old next year. Ringo Starr is already 80. Like the Beatles are in their 80s. <laughs> like these baby boomers are starting to get really old. What happened was uh, that saved Social Security was the millennials. So you have the baby boom generation moving through. This thing, you know, got this big fourth grader that the snake ate moving through and changing society as it moved. Uh, but their kids... And not just their kids, but also new immigrants. We know the new, the new immigration population is a lot older. It's one of the reasons the millennials are a very diverse generation. Turned out to be bigger than the baby boom generation. Turned out to be bigger than the baby boom generation. They, they, um, they pay taxes. They pay taxes. And the taxes they went in are now going to the Social Security of the baby boomers who are retiring. There are... Um, 30 million baby boomers retiring a year. I mean, that's a lot of people who are going into Social Security. So what we get now, instead of this, you know, this standard thing, right, is something that looks like this. This is America now, where you still have, like, the really old people, the people that fought in World War II, and we've got a lot of people living over 100 nowadays. Then you have the baby boom generation, which is smaller because a lot of them died along the way. You know, they overdosed in the 60s and were killed in Vietnam, or they, they died of AIDS in the 80s, or they died in an SUV crash last week. So it's gotten smaller, and there are now about 70 million uh, baby boomers in the country. Then you have this very small generation, Generation X. In fact, 1974 was the year the, the birth rate bottomed out. So if you meet someone that was born in 1974, it's like a unicorn. They're very rare. Uh, and then it started to grow again. There's about 60, 64, 65 million uh, Gen Xers left. Then the millennials, I mean, this is such a great drawing, I know. This huge echo wave that include the children of the baby boomers and young immigrants is even bigger than the baby boom generation. It's about 73 million people. Uh, and, and the millennials go, you know, and these ages vary depending on, on which demog demographer you talked about. Roughly the millennials are the people born between the year 1981 and 2000 or 2001. Following the millennials, and so the millennials now are between ages of 21 and 40, right? They're now starting to settle down and have their own kids. But between that, we have another sort of version of Generation X, which is Generation Z. Generation Z are the people that were born after the year 2000, which is a lot of you in this class, I know. Uh, and, and they are um, they're bigger than Generation X, but they're much smaller than the millennial generation. Millennials are about 73 million people. 
uh, Gen Z is about 67 million people and relatively small. And so we've got something happening right now because of this. We've got a whole bunch of people retiring, 30 million people a year retiring from this huge generation. So our society where it was focused on young people in the 60s is now focused on people Dolly Parton and Donald Trump's age uh, with a whole bunch of young people following behind them that are now, you know, going into their 30s and 40s and a really small youth population. And one of the things that we're facing in colleges right now is enrollment is declining. Why is enrollment declining? Does it have anything to do with the cost of education? That might be part of it, but also part of it is there's just so few young people because the birth rate is going down and down every year. Now, the value of this is we can do some prediction, right? As the millennials hit 40, they're gonna start saying, I need to have some babies. <laughs> But it's different now because the economy is different. When these people were young and the economy was roaring, you could have some babies and you could take care of them. You could put them in the backseat of a brand new SUV. When the millennials have babies, they're like, well, yeah, but I'm going to take the baby with me on my postmates job. Um, you know, there's, there's less economic security for the millennials, many of whom are still living at home. So the question is, will Gen Z be fo followed by Gen triple A or whatever the next generation is going to be. And will that be bigger or smaller? It'll probably be smaller because millennials are really delaying having children. Uh, and so these age demographics do a couple of things. They allow us to give um, some predictions about, you know, what's to come down the road, but they also uh, allow us to understand why culture is as it is. And right now we're in kind of a cultural um, competition between the aging baby boomers, those hippies from the 60s that are now in their 60s and they are in their 60s, um, 60s and 70s, uh, and this huge millennial generation that is, you know, staring in the face of 40 and figuring out, is it time to settle down and, and um, you know, start a family? And the culture will reflect that. But th those millennials explain, the huge millennial explain the sort of tween population, Britney Spears, and the Backstreet Boys were all a kind of a reflection of the fact that there were so many tweens uh, in the year 2000. So, so th this, uh, this is a great way to kind of talk about culture. I love it because it helps us understand sort of music trends and fashion trends and when we're nostalgic. Um, but the baby boom generation really sort of changed, changed our culture just by being so massive. Okay, something to think about. Think about where you are in this weird model um, and, uh, and, and what it means for your future. All right, that's our last little discussion. There's a, one more lecture question coming up at the end and then we are out of here. Peace from Generation X to Generation Z and the Millennials and whatever comes next. I hope you dug this conversation.